You know, I've done this to you before, it's like previously in Mathematics Extension 1. We had, perhaps for some of you, a world of pain as we were trying to understand how to, in this particular diagram, I wonder if the gears are turning for you, resolve forces when you've got things going off at weird angles. And we call this particular kind of problem, like it's common enough that it gets a name, we call this a weight on an inclined plane because it's exactly what it sounds like, at least it does what it says on the tin. Now, in order to solve what's going on here, right, you might recall, and I'm going to do a quick and dirty diagram over here, you might recall that there was more than one way to solve such a problem. Now, I'm conscious of the fact that not everyone gets shown every single piece of this, but um, hopefully it will ring some bells for several of you, and for others, it will yield some cool insight here, right? So, you can see there are three forces being or acting upon our particular weight on our inclined plane, right? I haven't, um, I haven't named all of them, right? You can see you've got the normal force, which is there because why? Why is the normal force there? Hmm, I could push on this, right? This equal and opposing force, right? Strictly speaking, I guess it comes from the electromagnetic force, right? Because uh, yeah, you've got electrons, ele right? Electrons in the plane that they want to do anything except for be at the same place as the electrons in the weight. So they push, right? This is why you've never touched something in any moment in your life. Because what you've experienced is not touching, but actually the electrons in the two hands, the two palms of your hand saying, I don't want to be there. And so they push against each other, right? Yeah. Okay. So you've got the surface, the inclined plane, pushing against the weight in a direction perpendicular to the surface. That's why we call it the normal, right? Uh, what's that T? It actually stands for not just tension, but what's it actually coming from? It represents something in this situation. Come on, it's a common situation. I think I heard it. Yeah, it's like a rope, right? There's something which is has tension in it that's pulling upwards, right? Otherwise, the weight just goes and slides down the plane, yes? And then our final force that we're interested in is? It's gravity, right? Uh, where's my green? Uh, the weight force, thank you. So, you know, if we were, um, if we were in space, there's no weight because um, gravity's not acting on that thing. So, we've got our, I'm going to call that mg as appropriate, right? So we've got these, and in order to get these to play along with each other, um, you have to, remember what it's called, resolve forces, right? Now, the traditional way is to say, well, the uh, gravity force, the weight force rather, it's vertical, okay? So we can just leave that, that's nice and neat. And then we can say, well, the other two forces in this, we can resolve, number one, in terms of their up and down bit, right? Here's the tension, and here is this going horizontally, and also I can do this for the normal force, right? So I've got this going off this way, and this is not quite as far up. Do you remember this? Is this ringing bells, right? Now you had to, because I'm going to have a whole bunch of right angle triangles in here, you had to do therefore a bunch of sine and cos, and then you get ratios. You'd make things equal to each other, if presumably this weight was not moving down the plane, and then everything was fine, right? Uh, fine, if you've got the right answer. Now, I said right at the start, this is not the only way to do it. This is not the only way to deal with all of the forces here. This is along the xy plane, right? Horizontal, vertical. But I could look at the same situation and I could say, wait, hold on a second, oh, I forgot that I can't do this on, on the board. Um, I don't need to look at it like square on, right? You could actually literally just take your head and rotate it anti-clockwise and look at this at an angle um, so that you don't have to keep on doing this the whole time. I'm going to try and do it for you. If I rotate it, it's going to look something like this, I guess, yeah. right? That can look right. Yeah. I'm going to have this here. Which way is the, I'm now looking as if I'm in line with the inclined plane, right? Uh, which way is the tension force going to go in this scheme? Yeah. It's going to go to the right. Importantly for me, not that it's left or right, but that it's exactly horizontal, right? Just like this weight force used to be exactly vertical, this is exactly horizontal. Which way is the, uh, I should label that, which way is the normal force going to go? It's going to go straight up. It is nice and neat and 
vertical in this scheme along the inclined plane. The one problem is uh, I still have to deal with the weight force, right? Where would the weight force be going in this scheme? How would you describe it? To the... Perpendicular to the diagonal. <laughs> Perpendicular to the diagonal. You're so helpful. Yes, okay. Well, I mean, this is, this used to be my hor horizon. It was horizontal, right? So I guess, kind of, if you want to think about being perpendicular here, being orthogonal, it's going to be hitting off in this direction. Do you agree? Something like that, okay? So you're never going to get away from the fact that you have to resolve some forces one way or another. But at least in this situation, I only have to resolve one, the weight force, whereas here I've got two. Right? So if you can do the mental gymnastics to think about how this works, it's advantageous to you. Does this make sense? Okay. Now, here is the thing though. As I've just pointed out, whichever way you go, you have to resolve some forces. Yeah? You've got to be able to say, this thing's off at a funny angle, whether it's your weight force or your tension or your normal, it's off at a funny angle. I've got to work out which part of it's this way and which part of it's this way. Do you remember that? Whichever way you go. You're either doing it once or you're doing it twice. Okay. Now, I guess my question to you is, is there a better way to do this? If only, right, there was some kind of technique we could deal with that allowed us with vectors to be able to say, there's just the part of this vector that I'm interested in is the one, for example, that's going off in, in this direction, right? I just want to know which part of this vector or how much of that vector is going in that direction. Uh, and then, conversely, I'd also like to know which part of that, say, tension vector is going in this direction, right? Now, sort of on this diagram, if you're looking in the xy plane, it's almost like, like a helpful metaphor for this would be, it's like this tension vector up here. It's kind of like casting a shadow down on this horizontal plane. If only I had some kind of easy to access technique that would allow me to work out the lengths and directions of such vectors. Except, wait a second, we do know exactly such a thing. So long as you know how to work out a dot product, it's pretty straightforward actually to work out something like this in a particular direction. What's it called? Projection. This is a projection, right? All you're doing when you're doing this projection, whichever direction you want, is you're working out how much of whichever vector you're interested in is going in the direction of some other vector that you're interested in. In this case, it would be you know, horizontal or vertical. In this case, it would be uh, parallel to the inclined plane or perpendicular to the inclined plane. You can put it any way you like. Now, the reason why we didn't have to address it here is because you might be able to see it on this diagram, right? We gave you nice, neat numbers. So you could do all that right-angled triangle trigonometry. You got nice, exact values. Everything was sweet. Guess what? The real world resists such simplification, right? In the real world, things fly off everywhere. They don't even just fly off everywhere in two dimensions. They fly off everywhere in three. So that's why today, what I'd like you to make a heading of is, here's a big star for you, projection for resolution, right? What we're doing is resolving vectors, right? Resolution is the, um, it's the noun for it. So we're going to use projections for resolution. Um, it's worth pointing out, by the way, you will not find this heading anywhere in the textbook. You will find a different heading, which I find remarkably unhelpful. Um, and maybe you'll be able to work out as we go through this which heading is referred to. I just think that's not actually the point of it. Okay? Draw with me a new diagram. It's going to look uh, quite different, but it's going to have some common features to what we've just done here. Okay? Um, I'm going to have, um, this is sort of like an inclined plane, so it's like a vector going off in any random direction. Okay? And what I want to work out is a projection in a second to enable me to resolve the forces of this thing, right? So I think, what do I call this thing? I'm going to have a starting position A. This is going to be P. I've got another vector. I think I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it short. B, and that'll do for now. OK. So if you have some inclined plane along AB, and then I've got some vector like this, maybe it's a normal force or a tension force or a weight force, could be any of these, right? How do I work out the part of this that is going along parallel to the plane? This is the easy part, right? I would have to say, I've got a vector here, AP. This is what I'm projecting onto, so I'll give you a bit of a clue. It's going to start like this, right? But then I need a base, and then I need a thing that's 
casting the shadow as it were. Which one is which? You've got labels here. Say it again loud assessment. <laughs> okay, so at least we know it's AP and AB, but which one goes down the bottom? Which one goes up the top? Okay, I think I heard it. Say it again, Emmanuel. Oh, project AP on AP. Very good. So I'm going to project AP, right? This is the thing which is the vector I'm interested in. And then I'm comparing it to, this is kind of like my base. It's off at a funny angle, but things often are off on funny angles, right? So that's, I'm deliberately drawing it like this. So AP is the thing that's being projected onto AB, like so. Is that okay? What would that look like? If you've got another color here, it will be handy, right? What would it look like? It's going to be casting a shadow from here onto this AB here. And you can see what that's why I've extended it out, right? It's actually going to give us this whole length kind of here. Do you agree with that? That's what you're going to get there, okay? If we got the length of it, that would be the scalar projection. If we got the thing including direction, that would be the vector projection. So far, so good? Okay, fantastic. Now, this is only one piece of the puzzle, or one half of the puzzle. When we resolve vectors, you can't just say, oh, I just want this one, right? You also have to account for it's got movement in another direction also, right? So where would the other vector be that would be the other half of resolving this particular vector against this inclined plane? Where would it go? Hmm. Now, I'll admit, uh, you potentially don't have enough language or notation to be able to describe what's going on here. So I'll give you a huge hand and say to you, if we call this projection AQ, right? Let me, let me label it as so. AQ. Does this help you at all? Where would you describe the perpendicular thing, the other part of the resolution of this vector? Where would it go? QP? QP? Does that make sense? Because I'm starting from here going in that direction, so part of it goes here and the other one goes that way. If I were to, if you want to think about it this way, come back to these guys, the reason you can know or the way you can know you've resolved it correctly is if you were to put this vector and that vector, the resolved pieces together, then you concatenate them one after the other, you should end up where the sum vector is, which indeed it would. If you went a Q and then like you just told me QP, I've got one piece and then I have its perpendicular piece. Does this make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and put that onto our diagram. So QP. This would be the other piece, right? And it is really important, the whole point of doing vector resolution is to say they're perpendicular or orthogonal to each other, right? So this is QP. Okay. Now, I hope that you can see now, spoilers, right? I said you wouldn't find this heading in your book. What we really need to do is find this length here, right? So what this is often described as, and this might call back some stuff from advanced even, is actually the distance from this point up here, P, to this line. I called it like our inclined plane or whatever direction you're resolving your forces in, right? So it's the distance between a point and a line that's the shortest. The distance between a point and a line that's the shortest. And just like if you were crossing the road, the way to cross the road the fastest is to cross perpendicular at right angles to that road. If you were like going off at an angle, you'd take extra distance. So this QP here, if I were to slap some absolute value signs around it, like so, what the textbook describes this as is the perpendicular distance from a point to a line. Does this make sense? This is the same thing, right? But the reason why we would care about perpendicular distance is because it allows us to resolve forces. This is why it's actually useful to us. Does that make sense? Okay, so here's the question for you. You, you know how to compute this with a dot product. I'm not actually interested in that. Presume you do this. I've given you some value for some vector, AP. I've given you some vector for AB. You get some vector out of this, right? How do you then go from that to this? I'm trying to work out this guy, and this is going to be one of the building blocks, okay? Say that again, but louder, right? AP minus projection of AP on AB. AP, is that what you said first? Yep. Minus the projection, this, this projection over here, AB, AP rather, on AB. Hmm, let's think about this for a moment. Do we agree? So what's this doing here? 
it's saying do these two vectors one after another, yes? So I'm going to start at A and then I'm going to go to P. And then I'm going to do, there's a minus sign there which means go in the opposite direction, yes? So I can see where this vector is, it's my green one, yes? So that's going to take me the other way. So it's going to land me over here. Uh, whoops, wrong color. Like so. So I started here, went there, now I'm down here. Is that what I want? I'm seeing some nods, but I'm also seeing confusion. I see a bunch of people who are nodding. If you're nodding, tell me why, because it looks like I, I said I wanted this thing. How is this the same? Calvin. Well, like, they're like the same vectors and they have the same lengths. Very good. We have language to this to describe this, don't we? Um, what Calvin's talking about is we have two vectors here that have the same. I think you said the same length. What's the other thing that a vector needs? Direction, Direction right? So these are parallel because, in fact, it's a parallelogram which we stuck a right angle into, hence a rectangle, like you said, Calvin. Uh, this is a displacement vector, is it not? Right? These two are equivalent displacement vectors. So sure enough, that's fine with me. Okay? If what I wanted was, remember the distance, right? The distance. In fact, it doesn't even matter about your direction anymore. I could just as easily go on the other way. Think about this for a second. If I wrote down, let's compare this. Projection of AP onto AB. If I did, where's it going? This one first? This one first. And then what I did was I subtracted AP. Think about what this is doing, right? I'm going projection first, right? And then I'm subtracting AP, which is, where's AP? It's here. So I'm going to end up in the opposite direction over here, right? So you can see, you're like, oh, it's either going that way or this way. If all I care about is the perpendicular distance, then it's fine. Those two are the same thing. I care even less about where this thing is, so long as the length is the same. Does that make sense? Now, you will see both of these written because when you take the absolute value, you don't care about whether it's positive or negative. Does this make sense? 